This is the AP Psychology Review for the psychologists looking at the units for consciousness and learning. So first we've got uh, William James, Sigmund Freud, and Ernest Hilgard. William James, he created, helped create the science of psychology. He was a functionalist. He studied also pragmatism and free will in his philosophical aspect of things. He also looked at the psychology of religious experience and how consciousness played a role there. But he viewed consciousness as a stream of thinking, but mistrusted the idea, and so he wrote philosophy about the topic. He also wrote a book called Does Consci rather an article called Does Consciousness Exist? Sigmund Freud, he created the notion of an unconscious mind, wrote on so many volumes, one of which was The Interpretation of Dreams. He talked about the manifest and latent content of dreams. The manifest is the stuff we remember, and the latent is what it actually means, what is the symbolic um, meaning of the manifest content. He also used free association to access the unconscious mind within therapy, and he also talked about defense mechanisms as an unconscious process to reduce anxiety. Ernest Hilgard studied hypnosis, uh, especially hypnosis as a tool for pain control. He created the Stanford Hypnosis Susceptibility Scales, and also the theory of the hidden observer um, for, that we have when we're hypnotized. It was a very controversial idea that you've probably read about. And so this is a type of dissociation, hypnosis is, a type of dissociation of consciousness from bodily experiences. And that's Hilgard and hypnosis. In the learning unit, we have a number of other folks, which you will hopefully find most familiar. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian, Russian physiologist, studied digestion and salivation in dogs. Classic, uh, classical conditioning was his thing and uh, unconditioned stimulus and response, and of course Pavlov's dog within the whole idea of classical conditioning, the salivation being the unconditioned response and the food being the unconditioned stimulus. John B. Watson was an early behaviorist. Uh, he studied classical conditioning, especially creating fear with a little boy known as Little Albert. After psych, he went into advertising and added sex to ads. John Garcia worked with taste aversion, and he looked with uh, examined rats and uh, plastic radiation bottles and looked at taste aversion as a survival mechanism. He conditioned animals to avoid foods that were paired with previously aversive tastes. And this process was not traditional uh, classical conditioning, but the conditioned stimulus with Garcia's work occurred long afterward, not immediately, and so he kind of broke the paradigm with that. And he also discovered that conditioning was applied to tastes but not sights and sounds when it came to the aversion. Edward Thorndike had the learning theory of connect connectionism. He looked at cats and how well they were able to escape these puzzle boxes. And they learned, uh, their learning got faster with repetition and successive trials. And he said that animals connected behaviors to outcomes. And so he created the, the law of effect, add an antecedents uh, plus behavior equals consequences and he is known as the father of modern educational psychology. Edward Tolman was a behaviorist but was influenced heavily by the Gestalt theories and he looked at cognition as part of non-reinforcement learning that is that rats could learn mazes without being hungry and so he came up with the idea of latent learning. He also created the idea of cognitive map and that's Edward Tolman. B.F. Skinner primary behaviorist, he said, he, you know, if you're a radical behaviorist, thoughts and feelings are not important. Only observable behavior is important. So operant conditioning was his game. He built on the work of Edward Thorndike. So reinforcement of behavior and punishment of behavior. Reinforcement is when a consequence increases the likelihood of behavior, and punishment is when a consequence decreases the likelihood of a behavior. He created the operant conditioning box, sometimes also known as a Skinner box, although he hated that term. And there was a lot of science to back up his views. B.F. Skinner. Robert Rescorla, less known in uh, regular AP Psych and Intro Psych books, but still an important figure. He created what was known, co-created what was known as the Rescorla-Wagner model of conditioning. And he says that an animal can learn the predictability of an event. And the more predictable an association, the stronger the conditioned response is going to be. And so this is going to be expectancy is what the animal seems to learn. And so with what Rescorla did, um, can we anticipate or can we expect that a certain association is going to be there? And if so, we're much more likely to be conditioned by it. Also, the, the study of spontaneous recovery is another thing that Rescorla did. 
Albert Bandura connected behaviorism and cognitive psychology with what he called social learning theory. He's most famous for observational learning, the modeling and imitation idea of uh, the Boba doll experiment. Those kids who were exposed to the model who were violent or aggressive toward the Bobo doll, they tended to imitate that behavior. He also came up with social cognitive theory, the idea that we learn by imitating the actions of others through vicarious learning, learning through what other people do and what their consequences are. He also came up with self-efficacy theory, the sense of control that we have. Is, it, uh, is our self-efficacy high? That is to say, we have control over our lives, or do we have low self-efficacy, where we have an, a, a low level of control over our lives? And he also came up with the concept of reciprocal determinism, which is to say the individual influences the environment, and that changed environment influences the individual, that changed individual then influences the environment, etc., etc. And that's the end of this section.